Auditory space is a very peculiar thing, and we live in Echo Land now. Now, one of the things that the mechanics, or the quantum mechanics people and the NASA people do not know, is that resonance is a peculiar kind of space. I'm simply mentioning as a simple fact that the NASA people are 18th century types, pre-Jules Verne, pre-H.T. Wells. They live in a kind of nursery world like a yellow submarine. NASA is a very old-fashioned bunch, semi-literate, never been through the real course. Anyway, the stuff they put out is cheap science fiction. It's hardware. And it's thanks to their ignorance of literacy, in its full sense, and ignorance of auditory space. Now, the peculiarity of auditory space, and I'm simply challenging any one of them to come forward, any scientist at all, I've met them on their own ground many times on this point. Auditory space is auditory a very peculiar thing, and we live in echo land now. In a simultaneous, instantaneous, all at once electric worldview, that is echo land. And that is auditory space. Auditory space has a very peculiar property. It has, it is a perfect sphere whose center is everywhere and whose margin is nowhere. It is totally non-visual and non-visualizable. Auditory space is a very peculiar thing, and we live in echo land now. Our DNA boys and our NASA boys still try to visualize space, meaning they have no relation whatever to the science they talk about. However, I never make value judgments. I make probes. I poke away here and there and see what I can find. As I say, my own values are literary. My own values are entirely on the side of civilization. On the other hand, I don't live in that kind of a world, and so I do probe the world I live in, and it happens to be an auditory echo land. Auditory space is a very peculiar thing, and we live in echo land now. Auditory space is a very peculiar thing, and we live in echo land now.